So today we're going to go into the 12 mini for this episode. We'll start off with the tag on orientation and proper installation. So this is our OEM FPC. We're going to bend it straight up and continue to pinch and fold it all the way back around itself. So just crimp it so the FPC folds back and now it's facing the cell. We'll grab our tag on. We use tweezers and slot it into position. I'm just going to line up the FPCs. The metal plate on the tag on will face the cell and then quick push and the two FPCs will connect. Take the tag from the FPC, fold it over, and then it'll be in the orientation to plug into the logic board. So you'll see that the tag on sits behind the OEM in between the cell. So moving on into the disassembly and unwrapping, we'll start with this first layer of wrap. So I'm starting at the back edge on this 12 mini. You can see the edge of the adhesive here. So I'm just using the tweezers to give myself a starting point, just picking away at the edge and lifting away to release this adhesive. So I'll get enough pulled away and then I can <coughs> get it uh, removed all the way from edge to edge. And then at that point, I can turn the battery over and begin to remove it from the front. So I'm just going to remove this layer by layer so you can see uh, there's already a second layer up under there that we'll remove as well. So moving on to the front now, I'll peel it away from the edge of this OEM flex on the BMS. And then you'll see the BMS underneath is again wrapped with a second layer of adhesive. So I'll just begin to peel it off the front here, just peeling it off all the way across the edge. And then once we get this first layer of adhesive pulled away, then I'll explain about this second layer of adhesive. <coughs> so just pull it off the edge here, and then that's our first layer of adhesive completely removed. Now we have the second layer, and you'll see the BMS is basically wrapped up and then folded onto itself with the second layer of adhesive. So from the same back edge again, you can see the edge of this adhesive here. So just picking away at it, give us a, ourselves a starting point. I'll get enough pulled away and then I can start to peel it away from edge to edge. So again, on this second layer of adhesive, because the BMS is wrapped up and folded with it, we just want to basically remove the rear tab of the adhesive and then once we get it completely removed from the back of the cell, we'll flip the battery back over and we're going to get a good grip on this <coughs> tape adhesive and then we're going to pull straight out from the cell. So having a secure grip on the tape, we'll flip the battery over, grabbing it and then just pulling straight out from the cell. You'll see that there's some ad glue adhesive that's securing the BMS to the cell. So just pull it straight out and the leads are folded a little bit so again you'll see some give when you do pull but just make sure you're not pulling too much once the adhesive releases you want to give way on that tension so peel the adhesive off the back of the bms and grab your ceramic scissors and you want to reach in between the cell and the bms and then when the leads is in between the blades of the scissors just clip them once it's severed and removed, flip the battery over, don't reach across. We're using ceramic scissors to prevent any type of bridging or shorting, <coughs> but again you still want to be careful. So now the BMS is completely removed, we're going to prep it using our sharpening pin here, which is available on the website, using our flathead, we're just using the edge, uh, having our whole forearm braced on the table. We're just moving back and forth across the welds about an eighth of an inch, uh, just grinding and breaking those welds down, allowing the residual lead to be removed. This is just going to give us a clean, flat, smooth surface to spot weld to. So that was our aluminum lead. It's going to come off pretty quick. This is our nickel lead. It's going to take a few more passes back and forth to get those welds broken down just because the nickel is a little thicker. Uh, but just back and forth across those welds, a few passes, and then that weld will release and then you'll see the nickel lead uh, begin to fall off of this pad here. So like I said just a couple more passes on the nickel and then this lead will fall off. So take the time to do this step, it's important, it's not very skill intensive. 
um, but it does give you a lot of better efficiency and the processes throughout after this step are, are very smooth. So just having all those extra layers and extra tabs uh, just caused me a lot of issues when trying to get a good connection on spot welding. So now that those are grinded away, uh, we'll move on into spot welding. So just like the 11s, uh, different from our uh, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max series, uh, going back to the 12 Mini, this is more of like the style of the iPhone 11. So there's a tab here that you'll unfold to spot weld to, and you'll spot weld to the tab, not actually directly to the pad. So on this style of BMS, the pad on the BMS is directly onto the actual circuit board uh, for the BMS. Um, on the 11 Pro uh, through 12 Pro Max, there's an actual protective plate, uh, plastic uh, cover in between that tab. Um, so on this one, you want to make sure that you're only spot welding to the tab. So we have our XCAP BMS here removed from the packaging. We took our protective covers off. This is our nickel and our modified lead. <coughs> so our modified lead has our laser welding here <coughs> which is uh, securing the uh, nickel tab to the aluminum. So you'll see a series of laser welds opting for the laser welds over the ultrasonic um, higher QC uh, passing on this uh, technology. So I'm just going to use the back of the tweezers here to rub in this pre adhesive. adhesive. This adhesive is just going to secure the BMS once we get it spot welded and wrapped back up. So aligning our tabs here from the BMS into our jig, we have our <coughs> 12 mini into our uh, B-Fix jig from Mechanic. We have the tabs uh, sitting here lining up with the leads. So this is our full nickel lead. So you can see me bracing up on the BMS to get everything snug. I have a new jig coming in soon that's going to aid in this actual process of keeping the BMS snug into the jig. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I have our brace point here as usual. I'm going to create a blowout or two here just to show you exactly what that looks like and how to recover from it. So if you do get a blowout all the way through the tab where you're not spot welding properly, the technique here is to just do feather light touches. So once you have your brace point, you're going to use your other pin to just come in and touch. You're not going to push in and apply a lot of pressure. You just want to touch and allow the weld to be completed. Then you can lift up. A lot of times when not applying enough pressure, creating a gap and not doing this technique properly, that's when you can create the arc, the sparking, and create a blowout through the actual tab. So once we have that done, about four to eight welds uh, on the lead, we'll move over to the other lead. Same technique, creating a brace point. You can see here uh, immediately, just right off the bat, I created a blowout here. You can see that sparking. But no fear, I just want to show you how you can recover. There is some uh, room uh, for error here. Just make sure that your welds uh, around and on either side, if there is this type of uh, issue, are secure. So just making sure that they're secure. We'll do a cool, quick pull tab, uh, pull on the tab to do a test to make sure that there's no weak welds. Uh, once you're assured that there's no weak welds, we can go ahead and fold these tabs back over, and then we can begin the wrapping process. Uh, to get everything folded back up and get a good clean finish here. So we'll fold everything back up and we can see here uh, we'll remove our protective cover off our pre-applied adhesive. I'm just checking here making sure that there's no sharp edges and everything is flat and flush. <coughs> remove this protective cover and then we can take our first piece of adhesive. We'll line it up with the edge of the BMS. It's a little long so we'll go ahead and clip it and get it just the length of the BMS. This is basically going to wrap around the BMS just like you've seen that second layer of adhesive just to prevent any shorts there. And it's just going to cover uh, the BMS on both sides. So once we got it cut to length, we'll go ahead and apply it to the top side. Once it's aligned, we'll apply some pressure down, get it secured and then we'll wrap the adhesive around the back side of the BMS. Once we get that completed, then we can begin to fold up the FPC and BMS <coughs> flex onto the cell, and so we can have everything in the proper uh, position to go ahead and connect to the logic board. So we'll do this final step of folding up the BMS into position. We're going to go ahead and still uh, apply a protective cover, uh, even though we didn't have one originally. Uh, it still uh, aids in the protection of the BMS. 
So it is supplied with the XCAT BMS inside the packaging. Just slip it on, it'll go edge to edge. Take your second layer of adhesive and you want to align the inside edge to the edge of the battery and then have it overhang. So slide it over just to center it up, but do align that inside corner. That's going to align the tabs to be able to fold right over the edge once you get the back sealed. So we're going to take the battery and fold it up onto the bottom edge and then take the bottom tab and pull it up onto the back of the battery. Once we have it smooth <coughs> and flush and sealed on the back of the battery, then you can see our tabs are aligned at the bottom and ready to just fold straight over. So we'll grab on one side with the tweezers and fold that over and seal it up. So our final steps here to seal in our battery and grab our other tab on the other side and make sure your OEM flex is flush to the cell. And with our tweezers, we'll grab and pull over our final tab to seal up our wrap. So this is gonna give us our good clean finish. And I'm going to go over uh, one more time, a quick recap of the tag-on installation. So we'll slide over to our OEM FPC here. Again, we're going to basically just bend it straight up and we'll fold it back all the way over itself and pinch it into place. We're just gonna reverse the orientation here and now it's facing the actual cell. So we'll grab our tag on and then using our tweezers here, we're going to slide it into place. So we'll put the plate of the tag on against the cell, align the FPCs up of the original flex and the tag on and push them to connect. Once they're connected, then you'll take the tab of the actual tag on, fold it over, and then it's in the proper original orientation to plug into the logic board. So again, I appreciate your time. Uh, have a good day.